One year ago, I started work as a doctor in the UK, fresh out of medical school in the middle of a bloody pandemic. This is my story. What's up Groovy Gang, Asmine here, junior doctor from London. I post videos about medicine, music, productivity, and learning new skills so that you can reach your potential. This is the first video of a series called Junior Doctor Diaries. If that kind of thing interests you, then please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon below to be notified when new videos come out. It's completely free and it helps hugely, so thank you. Now, seeing all the new junior doctors joining in this week has made me a bit emotional actually. Man, they're so cute, they're so keen and ready to save lives. I was like that once upon a time. In my youth. So I thought I'd reflect on my experiences during my first week as a doctor. Story time, let's go. Let's rewind to March 2020, the final exams of the final year of med school. We had our practical exam, the OSCEs first, and then a week later, our multiple choice exam on the 16th of March. That was the very day that lockdown was enforced in the UK, and the last time I would see my friends in many, many months. This was when COVID was rapidly rising, the beginning of the first wave. Intensive care units were filling up, the NHS was only beginning to feel the immense pressure of COVID. We were graduated early because of this. Many of my colleagues joined four months in advance so they could help in the effort against COVID. Because of my asthma, I decided to step back and chill for a while. I mean, I've just been through six grueling years of med school. I think I deserved a break. Fast forward to late July and I joined my new hospital, a working doctor at last. On day one, I went into the hall. The other new doctors were already sitting at their desks, so I found the nearest empty one. Everyone social distancing, masks on, pin drop silence. Do I introduce myself to the person next door? Do I start talking or just keep my head down. I remember texting my friend like, what do I do? Long story short, it was fine. We all got to know each other over coffee and biscuits and they are a fantastic bunch. So what actually happens during induction week? Well, we had introductory sessions about who's who and where we can find help. Boring but important stuff like ID cards, payroll, contracts, IT training. We had seminars on important topics like safe prescribing, blood transfusions, and resilience. And we also had a quick tour of the hospital. And finally, we got to the fun doctory stuff. Now, I want you to leave a comment below. What's one thing that you wanted to ask about life as a doctor? So we all had to do an ALS or advanced life support course. This involves simulation scenarios about what to do when patients are critically unwell and go into cardiac arrest where their heart stops and they're not breathing normally. We took turns in doing chest compressions, rescue breaths, using the defibrillator and leading the scenario. <laughs> Live, damn you! We had a session called ATSP, Ask to See the Patient. When you're on call, you carry a bleep or pager so that others in the hospital can contact you or your team. And my God, the bleep is the bane of a junior doctor's life. When you're super busy and you're constantly getting bleep, this, that. So this was a training session on how to handle the bleep, how to prioritize the jobs you're given and how to navigate the hospital. Hospitals are like a maze, at least the ones I've been to. So this session was really useful to get my bearings and to practice some of the day-to-day -day jobs expected of a junior doctor. Normally I write down on my to-do list the time I got bleeped, the number to call back, and I tick it off when I've responded to the call and I double tick when I've completed the job. Ugh, not again. Hello, Asmine, Surgical F1. Doctor, did you uh, prescribe the fluid for bed 5? Wait, wait, wait. Which patient? Which ward? Which hospital? Thankfully, that kind of call is a bit less common nowadays because everyone's trained to do an S-bar handover. And frankly, this should be the gold standard of communication for any telephone call ever. S-bar stands for the following. Situation. Introduce yourself, your name and role, and why you're calling. Background, a concise story about what's been going on. Assessment, what's your clinical assessment of the situation after you've seen and examined the patient, or, you know, tried dealing with whatever situation you're facing. And recommendation, tell them why you want their help, what you want them to do, 
and ask them whether they have any advice for you. Finally, we had shadowing sessions where we'd go on the ward we're going to start work on and follow around the doctors and copy what they do, essentially. It's a bit different from when you're shadowing as a medical student, when you could sneak off and say, hmm, I've got to go to teaching now because now you're on the job and from next week, you're the one responsible for looking after the patients. This was a good opportunity to introduce myself to the doctors on the ward, the consultants, registrars and other junior doctors, but also the multidisciplinary team, the nurses, healthcare assistants, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, ward clerk, discharge officer, cleaners, caterers, everyone has an integral role to play so you'd better make some friends. And then it came my first proper day working as a doctor. My god it was exhausting. I was on an elderly care ward which meant loads of old and vulnerable patients with lots of comorbidities. The first ward round it was never ending but you just got to keep going. Usually the consultant or registrar will speak to the patient, examine them and you'd be there documenting the examination and discussion and then you'd action the plan that they've set out. A lot of the jobs are basically admin stuff that require medical knowledge, writing in the notes, booking and chasing up investigations, making phone calls, but sometimes the patient becomes more unwell and you have to go and deal with that. You quickly learn when you're on the job that you've got to eat and drink when you can, sit when you can, pee when you can, and that's like a mantra. Sometimes you do end up staying late when there's a lot to do, especially at the beginning when you're getting used to things. I remember on my first day I stayed late because I had to have a telephone conversation with a patient's daughter. She was really worried he wouldn't make it out of hospital alive and that she couldn't visit him because of the COVID restrictions at the time. So I had to comfort and reassure her while explaining the complex medical stuff going on in an easy to understand way. And that's a challenging thing to do. I got good feedback from my colleagues colleagues and the senior nursing staff so I think I did alright. And I learned that you should always help each other out. Some of my fellow junior doctors who started a few months early were a massive help at the start and throughout to be honest. When you have a team who's helpful, understanding and supportive that really makes all the difference. So that was my first week as a doctor. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned something. If you have please leave a like, it helps massively. Check out more of my videos from the playlist on screen. Subscribe now for more junior doctor diaries as well as videos on music, productivity and learning new skills like cryptic crosswords and graphic design to reach your potential. Until the next time, stay groovy.